We're going to pick a random product from the Amazon search page and we're going to model, texture and render this in Blender. We can then use that model to make some cool animations and pictures which we can then send to the company. We can then get them to pay us some money and then we're going to make some more footage for them. So as always, we're going to download this picture from the Amazon page. I'm going to make a new folder specifically for this project. And this is where I'm going to save all the references and textures that I'm going to use for this little project. If you don't know what this thing is, this is the thing you put on the floor. You plug your electric guitar into it, and then you plug this thing into your amplifier. So now when you're playing guitar, and if you press this button right here, it's going to go from a clean sound to a very heavy distorted sound. Now since I'm so fucking cool, I am a guitarist, so I do have one of these with me. Having the object in your hands is always the best type of reference. If you can't afford that luxury, then you're just gonna have to go look for pictures on Google. But this time you're lucky because I'm gonna tell you what I see on mine. If you want more references, just Google the name of this object. This one is called Little Big Muff. And now you can find a whole bunch of pictures from various angles. Now go into Blender and go to Top View, press Shift A, Image, reference and load up your reference image into the scene you can also drag and drop your reference image into the scene just make sure that you're in top view when you do this because this reference is always going to face you when you add it lower this and place it somewhere below the scene we're going to try to place it exactly in the middle of the scene and we're also going to use a little bit of transparency because this thing is hard to look at because of how bright it is we're going to start with a plane, scale it up so it fits the width, and scale it up on the y-axis so it fits the length. Normally, you would now probably need a side reference, but since I got this thing in my hand, I can tell how thick it is, so I can just extrude it up, and I know that it's something like this. It doesn't matter too much if you miss it a little bit. We're going to take the edges on the corners, and with Control b we're going to bevel them to get these round edges. We're not going to use a subdivision surface modifier this time, so you want to make sure that you add enough segments on this bevel to make it look nice and smooth. We're also going to add a horizontal loop cut down here at the bottom, slightly bevel bevel that and hold down shift because it has to be a very small bevel. This only has to have one segment. Then we're going to extrude this, right click and scale it down a little bit to make this little gap. We're also going to add a small bevel on top like this. And now I want my 3D cursor on this surface over here. I'll go to top view and with shift A, I'll add a circle with six vertices. We're going to scale this down and I want to use this to create the button. Fill the circle, extrude it up slightly like this. Then with this geometry selected, press control B to bevel and then press V to only bevel the vertices. When you do this, make sure to use C to toggle clipping, otherwise it's going to end right here. You want to bring these bevels very close to each other like this. And we're going to scale all this down on the Z axis, and this is approximately the shape for this little screw right here. Thomas Colin 3 d has an excellent tutorial for how to make nuts like this. Now we're going to extrude this inwards a little bit like this, make a hole by extruding it down. I'm going to add a new circle here because I don't want to have this mess right here. We're going to extrude this and lift it up a little bit like this. Add a bunch of horizontal loop cuts like this. Then with Control b we're going to bevel those. We want to turn each edge loop into two edge loops. Then switch to individual origins, extrude, right click, scale, shift Z, and make this part slightly wider. And then scale all of these down on the Z axis to make the ends pointy. Go to Object, Shade Auto Smooth, Correct the Normals, and now you'll be okay. At the top here, we just have to lift this up a little bit and make a bevel here. We're going to inset this face, and now we get to the button itself. So we need an extra little segment over here, which we're going to extrude inwards. Take this one, lift it up, extrude, scale it up, extrude, lift it up. Control B to bevel it. And this is pretty much what this little button over here looks like. I'm going to press K, and I'm going to create one horizontal knife cut like this. And then I want another vertical knife cut through this entire object. The intersection has to be on this little red light bulb in the middle. So make sure that this vertical cut is exactly on half of the object. Then take this vertex, control B to bevel it, press V to only bevel the vertex, make it about this wide, increase the number of segments, and set the shape to something like 0.1. Now just increase the number of segments and this is gonna give you a damn near perfect circle. Now extrude this in order to delete the undersurface. It doesn't look too much like a circle, so we're going to use our loop tool to turn this into a circle. Then we're just going to extrude up a little cylinder. With control B, we're going to bevel this, set the shape to 0.5, and now we turn this into a little dome, which we can use to make the light bulb. Now we need the volume, the tone, and the sustain knobs here. So we're going to take two edges from the top. We know that these two edges are equal, so we're going to scale this down a little bit. The middle vertex is going to be on the middle knob, and the two vertices on the side are going to determine the location of the other two knobs. Place a 3D cursor over here. Give me a cylinder with something like 64 vertices because I don't want to use a subdivision surface modifier. Fill this circle, extrude it up, bevel the top. This is supposed to be approximately as tall as it is wide. Down here at the bottom, we have a screw which looks just like this. So with L, I'm going to select this mesh, duplicate it, separate it to a new object, place the 3D cursor on the bottom face, 
object set origin origin to 3d cursor and now when we place a 3d cursor over here we can snap this screw over there now just duplicate this and place it on all the other vertices and we need two more details for this model we need the input jack on this side the output jack on that side they're the same thing so we just have the model one we're not going to make the power jack because that's not going to be visible in our renders but i'm going to make these little feet at the bottom so again give me this nut from over here separated to new object and use the 3d cursor to place this thing on the side of the object shift d and mirror this to the other side by scaling it to minus one on the x-axis with the 3d cursor placed in the middle of the object we're also going to need a little circle at the base of this thing to make the feet we're going to press ctrl 7 to go into bottom view delete the reference image we don't need it anymore just give me a simple circle with 32 vertices extrude it upwards a little bit inset it inwards a bit extrude it up a bit more fill it bevel it and that's done obviously gonna have to make more of these so you're just gonna want to mirror them across the middle and place them on each corner now the model is ready we just have to make some textures the problem is that this thing has a unique design on the face. And good luck finding a high quality texture of this which you can just download and place on the surface. Unless you're in contact with the company itself, you're probably not going to be able to find this. I'm going to draw this thing up myself. So I'm just going to copy a high resolution image from Google. Paste it into Paint.net. Go to Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast. We're going to crank up the brightness. Luckily, we're just going to have to clean this texture up a little bit. For example, I can use my Magic Wand tool to select this black surface. I can also include this in the selection. And then just use my Bucket tool to make all this shit completely black. We're going to do the same shit with the red colors. I've got those in a new layer because they're kind of messed up on the sides. So we can use some red lines to correct the edges a little bit and make sure they're not so jagged. We're going to use our shape select tool. I want the rounded rectangle. We're going to use that to create this little top shape. We need a much bigger corner size to get the right curve up here. It needs to be a little bit thicker. Then delete the lower portion. We're going to extend this a little bit and just connect everything with a black line. I also want a little bit of text over here. So I'm going to use my text tool, set the font to Ariel. Ariel pretty much works for anything. And in capital letters, we're going to write volume over here, tone over here in the middle, and then sustain at the end. Up here, we want to write amplifier. We're going to shift this to the side a little bit. I want a gray background for this, and that's going to have to be metallic. Now just flatten this and save the texture. Let's go back to Blender and switch to the shading workspace. Add a new material. We're going to name this face. Drag and drop the texture image into the shading editor. Plug the color into color. Select the surface on the top deselect these edges in the middle but keep the ones around this little circle Control e mark seam now we can select this surface and uv unwrap it in the uv editing workspace we're going to rotate this and do whatever it is we got to do to make sure that this image is aligned correctly this has to be a metallic material we're going to add a simple black material to the knobs select all the other knobs Control l link material the knobs need to be a little bit more smooth i don't feel like creating a texture specifically for this so i'm just going to add a very thin plane on top here this is going to be the little pointer at the top of this knob which is going to indicate the position of the knob then we need a simple metallic and low roughness material for the input and output jacks we're going to name that metal and apply the same metal material to this button right here on the inside of the input and output jacks we're going to add a new material slot and assign it to that surface create a new material that has to be pitch black zero specularity as for this little light bulb in the middle it has to be red we're going to reduce the roughness and crank up the transmission because this is going to make it behave like glass you can already see it in the material preview but it's going to look even better in cycles render and check it out there's a fucking dog in this hdri anyway let's also make a black material for the legs this just has to be a simple black color i also want to have some kind of a more realistic metal texture because this isn't just a flat gray color so i went over here to textures.com i want some kind of a galvanized metal texture we have to download all the texture maps for this particular material we're going to place that metal texture in the background of this texture that we drew up earlier we might have to adjust the brightness a little bit if it's too dark and next thing you know you got a pretty decent texture for your object now you just got to figure out a way to render this i'm not going to show you how i'm rendering this because i'm completely mentally exhausted from trying to texture this thing it was a real pain in the ass so here's some pictures of the results that i got from this if you want to download the shit that you see me model in my videos i put a bunch of it up on patreon so go check that out like the damn video let me know in the comments what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next one